Hello and welcome to a new video on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. This video is part of a series of MuleSoft video tutorials where I'm covering different topics related to MuleSoft. In this video, we will see that how we can use MuleSoft Object Store V2 and we will see that how we can use this uh, Object Store for sharing the data in or across multiple Mule applications. Let's look at the topics that are going to be covered as part of this video tutorial. First of all, I will have some theoretical overview of Object Store where I will explain exactly what is Object Store and how it is used and what is the purpose of using it and what are the typical use cases where you can use Object Stores. And then we will have a demo where uh, I will implement a scenario in AnyPoint Studio where I will use uh, a flow where we will be saving data into an Object Store. And then we will see that how we can retrieve data from the object store. So let's first talk about object store theoretically what exactly it is. Object store is used to store and share data and state information across applications, batch processes and components. So whenever we talk about uh, data being stored uh, persisted uh, and shared uh, between the applications or between, between the components, then uh, the data that is saved and sh shared using object store is in the form of uh, key value pairs. So all the data that you will have uh, in object stores will be in key value pair format where uh, you will be saving data against a particular key. And it's important to understand that uh, object stores are not mean to uh, be used as a replacement for the database as the purpose and the underlying principle of using object store is not the same as using the database. Normally, whenever you have uh, some specific scenarios where you want to share, share some data across the uh, components or across the batch processes or across the applications, then you prefer to use object store for uh, some sort of uh, data like you want to sh uh, share access token, you want to have some caching principle, and in actual, uh, some of the components which are uh, already uh, uh, readily available in uh, MuleSoft, uh, for example, caching uh, component that we have, they are also using uh, object store underneath. So there can be plenty of scenarios where you want to say, for example, maybe you want uh, to say watermark and that needs to be shared across the application processes or across the application flows, then that watermark can be saved into a key value pair in the object store. And then it can be uh, persisted and it can be used uh, using the uh, operations which are made available as part of object store uh, v2 connector. So let's look at the object store operations or functions that are provided as part of this connector. Object store uh, uh, module is not by default available in your uh, AnyPoint Studio and you will have to get it from AnyPoint Exchange and once you have uh, object store available in your uh, AnyPoint Studio then you will be able to see all the operations which are currently supported by uh, this component or this connector. So we can see that it has a clear operation which is used to clear uh, an object store. It has a contains operation which uh, tells us whether a specific uh, key is uh, available in the object store or not. It is used, it also has a function uh, with the name remove which is used to remove uh, some uh, key value pair from the object store and it has an operation to, uh, for retrieve and this is used to retrieve some value against a particular key. And then you have retrieve all uh, which returns you all of the uh, key value pairs uh, from a particular uh, object store and retrieve all keys it's returning it's going to return you only keys not the values and then you have the store operation which you use to store key value pairs into the object store so now we have uh, the basic concepts about the object store clear then let's move on to a demo where we will see that how things work in real I have already created a new project in AnyPoint Studio and I have given it the name Object Store V2 Tutorial. So we are going to do our implementation of uh, the flows in this, in this uh, AnyPoint Studio project. First of all, uh, we will have uh, to create a flow which is going to store the data into the Object Store. For that purpose, you need to have uh, Object Store module available. In my case, you can see it's already available here. But if it's not available uh, in your case, then you need to get it from the AnyPoint Exchange. 
so i'll just uh, use this and now you can see that all of the operations which are part of this object store connector are made available so first i want to use http listener as the uh, source or, or as the process starter and here i'm going to use connector configuration so in the connector configuration we need to specify host and port let's keep it default 8081 and click ok and for the path i'm going to use slash store and that's how i'm going to store the data uh, using this flow so now after this uh, let's create a, a set variable activity and in this set variable i'm going to extract the key from the uh, query parameter so the key will be sent in the http request by the client and that key will be used to store the data subsequently so let's name it as key and the value is going to be attributes dot query params dot key so key is going to be part of the query parameters in the client's request so after setting this variable the next thing i want to do is that i want to use this uh, key and the first thing i want to uh, do is i just want to see if this key is already there or not so for that purpose i will use this contents operation and this contains operation will check whether the key is present or not so here i'm going to specify the key so it's in the var variable wars.key and here we need to specify object store so i'm going to create an object store here so this is the uh, global element properties for object store and here you can see that we have plenty of options for example we can specify time to live we can also have uh, uh, configuration whether we want to have it as persistent or we want it to have uh, non-persistent or in-memory uh, object store so if you see by default persistent is checked it means that uh, the data will be persisted and even in case of failures of our uh, at, at, at the runtime this uh, data which is saved as part of this object store will remain saved and also if you don't specify time to live by default it's 30 uh, 30 days but if you specify for example if i specify 120 seconds then it will be uh, uh, saved in this object store for 120 seconds which is two minutes so i will just click on ok okay so after this the next thing i want to do is that i want to use a choice operator so if this key already uh, exists then i don't want to store anything but if it does not exist only then i want to store the data into the uh, object store so here in the condition i'm going to write payload equal equal true so if payload is true which means it's already there then i'm just going to have a logger and this logger will state that this key already exists and if it doesn't exist uh, in that case it go to the second condition or the default condition where i'm going to use store so you can see a uh, store operation is available as part of this connector uh, operations and here we are going to specify the key so key will be the same that we have saved in the variables so wars.key and we are going to sa save some data so right now the payload is filled with whatever we get from the contains method so this means we need to set payload also so so we need to uh, save the payload into a variable instead of uh, into the payload uh, element so let's uh, use uh, set variable so we don't need set payload so in the set variable i'm going to name it as data and the value will be payload so here whatever payload is coming from the client that's going to be saved into this variable so now even if the payload gets overwritten the actual payload then this payload which was received initially will be saved as part of this data element so now here in the store we are going to save uh, wars dot data so this data is going to be uh, uh, sent into the uh, store and then here we have to select the object store which is already created and nothing else we want to do and after that we just put a logger 
and in the logger I will write data has been saved in object store pretty much simple I'm not going to have any fancy flows here so this is pretty much simple so next I'm going to create another flow where we will be receiving the data for that purpose let's add another flow and in this flow we are going to have listener again so we will use http listener as the starter for this so in the http listener we will select the same http listener configuration and here we will uh, use the path with slash fetch we are going to fetch the data or we are going to retrieve the data okay so now i'm going to use uh, retrieve operation so retrieve from object store will be used and this retrieve operation in the key i will specify the key which will be received as part of a query parameter attributes dot query params dot key and the default value if uh, there is no value received then we need to have some default value here so the default value is no data found so this is going to be the default value and here i'm going to select the object store same object store and that's pretty much simple and then i'm going to have a logger where i'm going to log the data so here i will just uh, log the payload because the response from the retrieve will be coming in this payload all right so now uh, here i'm going to use a transformer just to send a proper response uh, to the http request so this transformer will be here and in this transformer i'm going to change it to json and i will just write message store mess uh, store operation completed this is not a very good uh, way of uh, returning the response message uh, same response message for happy and unhappy scenarios but i'm keeping it as simple as possible so that's why i'm just writing it like this and here also i'm going to have a transformer at the end and here i will write json and here i'm going to pass the payload in the response pretty much simple now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to uh, run the project and then we will use uh, a client to uh, send the requests so i have uh, opened uh, um, postman and i have created a request localhost colon 8081 slash store question mark key is equal to tutorials pedia so this is going to be the key that i'm passing as part of query parameter so let's change it to post method so this is going to be the body the body has site and message so just a simple message with site name tutorial pedia and the message is subscribe the channel so this is just an example that how we can post the message and this is going to be in the json format so let's verify that the process yeah, is deployed successfully we can see that the deployment is done so now we are going to hit the hit the service so once we send the request we can see that we got a response which states that uh, status code is 200 and it says store operation completed now if we go to the logs we can see that data has been saved in the object store so this is the message we have seen in the logs now what we are going to do is that we are going to change it to uh, fetch because fetch is the second uh, flow which is going to retrieve the data from this object store and now if we click on send we can see that the data which was saved by our store operation is being fetched and returned so if we try to put some wrong key for which data does not exist it says no data found because that's the default that we have specified when we were implementing our solution so in this way we are able to send the data into the object store and then we are able to retrieve the data from the object store in the similar way you can try and play around with all of the other operations which are available uh, in this uh, uh, object store
connector like remove retrieve retrieve all which i have already explained all of these so that's it from this video tutorial uh, where i try to explain in the simplest possible manner how we can use object store v2 if you have any questions you can write in the comment section and uh, if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you